pausing the session. So dear audiences, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the 2022 Korea TSO International Conference. I'm the Zulu host, Andy Jiahao Liu. In this room, each presentation will last for 25, 25 minutes, ideally 20 minutes for presentation, plus five minutes Q&A. To ensure a smooth presentation, please, Mute yourself throughout the process. If you have any questions, please feel free to type your question in the chat box. Meanwhile, the presentation will be recorded and thanks for your kind cooperation in advance. We will now have a presentation entitled Effective Education for Refugees, a case study on North Korea educational perspective, delivered by Professor Jones and Dr. Whitehead. So Professor Jones and Dr. Whitehead the stage now is yours. Hold on real quick. All right, there we go. So, um, Hello everyone. Uh, as uh, introduced, I am um, I'm Aaron Jones. My colleague George Whitehead will uh, be introducing the topic on effective education for refugees, uh, and I'll go ahead and let my colleague uh, begin. All right. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us uh, for our presentation. Um, first off. This presentation is based off of a recent publication in current psychology. Um, this study aimed to investigate how changes in the educational environment impact North Korean refugees' educational perspectives and behavior. So coming from the North Korean educational system into the South Korean system, how did that impact their perspectives about education? and also to explore what major factor played a role in those changes. So this can be found on uh, uh, searching Google Scholar if you want to find that, or there's a link in the PowerPoint, which is also available for you. Okay, a little bit about our presentation today. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit through the literature review and the background of the study. Um, I'll also present the research gaps uh, and questions that were explored in the study and also talk about the methodology. Uh, Aaron will talk about the findings and implication. He has some concluding thoughts and I will talk about some future research directions. So the background of this study. Um, when we first began this study uh, a few years ago, um, this is based on the fact that there are a lot of North Korean refugee students between the ages of you know, zero and 19 in South Korea. And there are major differences between the educational systems in North Korea and South Korea. And this has been well documented in the literature. Adjusting to this new system in South Korea uh, is a source of significant stress and anxiety for refugees because of the major differences that do exist. And it's not just the system that, that causes stress on these individuals, there's also major differences they face due to social pressure, isolation from society, and sometimes even discrimination in the school system. So all of these things can impact the way they perceive education. Some of the major differences that are presented in the literature for North Korean education, first of all, the education mainly focuses on two objectives, and that is to provide technical training for the working class and ideological training based on Kim Il-sungism or Juche philosophy. So these are kind of um, establishing or fostering this kind of loyalty to the party and also this ideology of self-reliance, right? Self-reliance in North Korea being reliant within the country itself. Loyalty in the education system is prized over academics. So showing loyalty to the party is part of a, you know, being a good student in North Korea. And you know, in recent times, there was the rise of the Jiangmengdang generation. And this had a major impact on uh, perceptions of education in North Korea. And these are the, the people who grew up in um, a time of great famine, 
And these people had to go out and sell things in markets. Uh, these are equivalent to maybe the millennial generation. And this changed their ideology because this developed more of a capitalist mind. And these sorts of people uh, looking upon the educational system in North Korea seem to think it was irrelevant, limited usefulness, and many students even drop out of school to work in the markets during that generation. So they started to kind of think more about the purpose of education rather than just accepting it before as it was. In the South Korean system, um, the way they experienced education in North Korea, of course, carries over into their experience in South Korea. So they're left with these ideas about education. Um, in South Korea, there's a big difference in the way that you know, education is taught. There's more of a focus on the individual, focusing on preparing learners for success in the country uh, long term. But there's also sources of stress within the system, which include language barriers, discrimination, and this kind of focus on the high stakes testing system and, and the SUNUM, so university entrance exam in South Korea. Another issue that has been presented in the literature is teachers at public school are often unable to address the differences that North Koreans experience in the system, and therefore that leaves them kind of out of the, uh, the mix. So I'm going to pass uh, it over to, to Aaron to talk about alternative schools, which are more supportive for North Korean students. Yeah, so um, a lot of the, um, there's a lot of different avenues that North Koreans often go to when they come to uh, South Korea. So about 45% of North Koreans will actually go to public elementary schools, 30% will go to public middle schools, 16% to public high schools, and then 9% will attend these alternative schools. Um, and there's a couple different reasons why North Koreans choose to attend alternative schools. The first is an alternative school is more uniquely tailored uh, of an educational environment for North Koreans to attend. Uh, the education is more geared towards their needs. It's more geared toward uh, what they need to learn. It also has financial aid and accommodation opportunities. Uh, a lot of the North Koreans who come are orphans. They don't have any support systems. And so these uh, alternative schools will provide dorms for them to stay at, some financial aid. And a lot of students who are older or have a significant age gap with their peers of the same grade level will often attend alternative schools to avoid any uh, uncomfortable embarrassments or uh, any, any kind of uh, discrimination in the school system. So these alternative schools are very unique uh, situations for North Koreans. Uh, and they're designed really to help North Koreans succeed, whereas public schools are designed more for the South Korean uh, student at large. So um, alternative schools are, they have a standard curriculum that is similar. The curriculum itself, the core is, is the same as public schools, but then again, they have that tailored educational experience that takes that curriculum and brings it towards the needs of the North Koreans. Uh, they also include specific, uh, specific educational endeavors, such as mentoring, uh, job training, there's cultural exposure, there are special class offerings, such as religion, psychology, arts, uh, they have internships. Uh, there's a lot of different things that exist at alternative schools that don't exist in public schools. And additionally, teachers are at our alternative schools are better able to address the cultural differences between the North and the South. So in reality of uh, what alternative schools are, there's not a lot of literature on alternative schools and North Koreans in them. Um, in Seoul, there's about nine or 10 alternative schools and only 9% of North Korean student population comes to those. So this population is pretty uh, difficult to reach at times. The literature that does exist tends to focus on mental health, acculturation, adaptation, and citizenship education. There hasn't really been any studies that have focused on educational perspectives, which is the, really the, the point of this study. So we had two research questions that kind of guided our study. The first was, compared to their experience in the North Korean educational system, 
What key differences do North Korean refugee students experience studying at an alternative school? And the second question, how do these experience differences affect their attitude towards education, sense of educational satisfaction, and behavior towards education? So I'm gonna hand it back to my colleague, George, to talk about the methodology. Okay, so for this study, we adopted a phenomenological approach which focuses on the lived experiences of these North Korean refugee students. We also decided to frame this in Bandura's triarchic reciprocate, reciprocal determination model. And what that means is looking at how changes in environmental factors impact personal factors. So personal factors like their attitude, cognition towards education, and how that can impact or relate to behavioral factors. So all of these have reciprocal relationships uh, and the focus is on the environmental change can impact all of these, which can align and impact one another at different times. The participants in this study included a purposive criterion sample of 21 North Korean refugees studying at an alternative school. Uh, the students had to meet the following criteria, of course, they must have been born in North Korea. The students must have studied in elementary school in the North before coming to South Korea so that they have experiences to draw from. And the students must have studied at the alternative school for more than two semesters so that they're familiar with the system and they have enough experience in the system to give knowledgeable insights. The data collection first involved the 21 participants filling out a paper-based survey we found that the data was still lacking. There were still some holes that needed to be filled. So we went back and we recruited five students from that original sample group to partake in in-depth interviews. Uh, and then we coded this data together. Um, after transcribing the interviews, we collaboratively analyzed and coded the, in, the data inductively using NVivo 12. So I'll let Aaron talk to you about what we found in our data. All right. So um, obviously, uh, so we kind of broke it down based on the based on the coding. Uh, we were able to break it down within the two research questions. So looking at the first research questions, the key differences that North Korean refugees experience, uh, we were able to find some significant themes. Uh, so firstly, under uh, we were able to find there was a significance in educational objectives. And one thing that kept coming up was the difference between loyalty to the state and the Kim family uh, versus personal goals experience, uh, an emphasis on personal goals experience at the alternative school. What's in italics are actually quotes of the students, and I'll read these to you. Uh, in North Korea, education, our education is only for the benefit of the state. Only a few can go to university if you are not from a good family. But here at the alternative school, I have enjoyed getting to study things other than just basic subjects like math and Korean. Uh, another, another significant uh, kind of subheading under this theme was that the unrelated versus related topics to personal life. So North Korean topics were unrelated, whereas uh, the topics at the alternative school were more related or more connected to the personal life of the students. So here's a quote. Since I came to the school, I have had the chance to study and develop myself. Um, I can focus on that as a goal. Uh, another theme that was brought about by kind of the general differences experienced by North Koreans is educational focus. Uh, the first sub theme that we encountered a significant sub theme was training for the military and revolutionary study versus training for personal aspirations. A quote here that was relevant, students in North Korea focus on military with only a handful going to college after high school. Students typically go to military directly after school. From, the, uh, from that point, uh, from the point that students enter high school, students focus on military preparation and revolutionary study. Another significant uh, sub theme we found was the irrelevant focus of the content versus the catered focus of, of the content at the, at the school, at the alternative school. So uh, in the North, we study about revolutionary history and the lives of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, but in life outside of the school, we never needed this information. 
All I needed to know was how to survive and sell things at the market. Uh, so there were significant differences and there, there's a lot more quotes and simply because of time limits, I can't share those with all of you today. Um, however, those are included in the study. Uh, so when you break that down, there's a significant difference between uh, these different subheadings. So when we look at the second uh, research question, uh, how do these experience differences affect these students' attitudes towards education, education satisfaction and behavior? This is what we found. When we look at educational attitudes, uh, generally there is a positive shift in attitudes towards educational endeavors. So a quote here, because of my family history of relatives living outside of North Korea, the government put surveillance on my family constantly. Study could bring me no gain because of my family background. I couldn't get any jobs besides the low jobs. I always wanted to be a teacher, but could not because of the government. Uh, another shift we found was a positive shift in educational outlook. I see now why learning is so important because education gives me a key for my future. Uh, so there were, there were two significant positive shifts in educational attitudes. Um, we also saw shifts in educational satisfaction, specifically a shift, a positive shift in happiness. Because I can have a dream in South Korea and can pursue it through education, I feel that I am happier in South Korea than North Korea, despite the increase in pressure and competitiveness. And that increase in pressure and competitiveness was actually another theme that we encountered in the study. Uh, but it was actually associated with a decrease in happiness. Uh, so a quote here, in North Korea, studying is not that important, but in South Korea, you have to study to be successful. I like that I can study for my dream, but I feel that I have to study harder because everyone else studies hard. At times, it gives me a lot of stress and takes away my happiness to study. Um, so in North Korea, there a lot of the findings showed that there was a that studying was not that important, but the increase in pressure to study in the South often decreased the happiness of the students. Finally, the differences in the environment also associated with behavioral changes. Um, so a significant sub theme of that was that they began to take education more seriously, ownership of education increased. A quote here. I think studying is very important now in the alternative school. If you study well, you can do everything you want. Therefore, I think studying is important. Uh, and then another sub theme, pressure to study. Uh, there was a pressure to study even harder than what they had been doing in the past. I study harder in South Korea. In North Korea, you don't need to study. Although I don't like studying, I have to study harder if I want to do well. I can see myself growing, but I also get more stress. So uh, some concluding remarks. Uh, when we synthesize all of these dynamic interactions, what we see here is that differences in environmental changes, uh, specifically uh, have a dynamic interaction with personal and behavioral trends of students. So some specific examples in this area, an environmental factor change of North Korean education being focused on Kim Il-sungism and ideological posturing versus an education alternative school that focused on helping students to grow in their personal aspirations led to positive personal factor changes, improved agency and satisfaction to be specific. Uh, additionally, another example that we can provide here, um, an environmental factor change, whereas at the alternative school, there are actually customizable educational opportunities and tools versus an irrelevant uh, military and revolutionary study in North Korea led to some positive behavioral changes, increased competence in studying and perceived learning and self-efficacy. So um, some final implications and thoughts uh, before I send it back to my colleague. Uh, the study points to dynamic interactions between environmental factors and personal and behavioral factors. Um, and the study does shed light on ways to combat issues that often plague Korean refugees, uh, such as academic and mental struggles. Uh, so it's widely uh, seen, we've already looked at it in the literature, there's a lot of different struggles, but uh, the study does point to 
catered education that is significantly different from their North Korean education does have potential to positively affect uh, a North Korean's outlook. So uh, su successful education for North Korean refugees uh, should include, according to other studies that are finding support, job-related development aligned with personal aspirations, teaching resources catered to refugees specifically, and supportive environment, a supportive environment for exploring post-school options. So those were different findings from other studies that are, we felt that our study actually supported. Um, so when we look at all the factors and taking a look at our conceptual framework, we were able to come up with a model of interactive dynamic uh, factors that positively affect educational attitudes and satisfaction. So uh, you can download our study, you can take a look at this um, and how agency and behavioral and uh, environment educational system all kind of affect each other to bring about more positive change among, excuse me, among uh, North Korean refugees. I'm gonna send it back to my colleague to talk about some future research opportunities. All right, so although this study has shed light on the kind of attitudinal changes and behavioral changes of these North Korean students and how that uh, environment and different factors in educational environment impacted those, this study is still kind of preliminary in nature. There still needs to be a lot more work done to flesh out all of the factors that can impact these students, I guess, both positively and negatively. Uh, additionally, uh, more research is needed, which includes North Koreans who come from uh, different regions in North Korea and China that might have, um, you know, an impact on the different factors as well that affect change in the South Korean educational system. Uh, the, the students in our study came from one specific area, um, and, and that's kind of a limitation of our work. Uh, it's also valuable in the future to compare these findings to findings from other alternative schools. Uh, as we said, it, it's quite hard to get access to these alternative schools, so anybody that can get access uh, and add to the literature in this area, it, it would be highly recommended. Um, and of course, work in public schools, the public school setting to compare uh, the factors uh, that do affect these students would be quite interesting. Not a lot of work has been done on that either. Additionally, further research should be conducted to explore possibly the correlation between educational satisfaction in an alternative school and academic achievement. And those kinds of studies can add a quantitative aspect to this qualitative uh, investigation that we conducted. So we'd like to thank you for joining us today, and we are now open for any questions you might have. Thank you. So if anyone has any questions, feel free. Uh, uh, George and I would be happy to answer anything that you heard or any maybe clarifications or Hello, how are you? Uh, can you? Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Hi, I'm just, just a comment really, because I, I have worked in the past with um, well, refugee and migrant students here uh, down in New Zealand, so not, not Korea. Um, and I'm interested in, in anything in that field really, but this is a, a very niche situation. And you're right, it seems like I've not really noticed specific research in this area before, not very much of it. So it's nice to see something done and you see, notice all the, all the future options there. It's just nice to see interesting things, but I'm guessing a lot of what you do or what, are, what the schools you're looking at are very uh, specific for this very specific situation. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually really, as, uh, as my colleague mentioned, it's very difficult to get access to North Korean populations. Uh, just the nature, as, as you probably experienced with refugee work in New Zealand, it's, uh, there's a lot of security concerns uh, with working with refugees. Um, and specifically with working with North Koreans, there's been a lot of security concerns in the past. So um, I actually have been working with North Korean refugees for the past 10 years, and that's how I was able to get 
kind of a positive relationship and access to the sample that we used for the study. Um, but yeah, that's, it's a very good point. Um, we kind of, in our study, we did kind of broaden it to more of a refugee education in general. We just weren't able in the scope of this presentation to include all of those comparisons. Mm -hmm. uh, but it should, you know, there is a lot of applicability uh, potentially to a larger refugee educational setting. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking through originally how here uh, there's lots of refugee support services and migrant support services who uh, help people sort of get on, talk to their neighbors, find a job, be part of society, which they generally want to do. Um, but it is, we have a very, we don't have any one, one major population. They come from everywhere. So the, the main focus is um, something that can be applied to everyone, individualized, but applied to everyone. Whereas I guess if you've got in South Korea, uh, a population of refugees who mostly come from the same place with a comparable background, you can be a bit more um, building a system for that group of people. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you. Are there, are there other questions? Hi, uh, I have a question. I'm sorry, yes. I'm sick, so I hope you can hear me fine. Oh yeah, we can. <laughs> but um, I was curious if you noticed any kind of patterns in the educational perspectives for when um, they actually left North Korea, like at what age? Because I know oftentimes refugees can leave at like a very young age or at an older age, and I imagine that would affect their initial perspective before they start South Korean education as opposed to afterwards. Did, were all of, you said all the students were born in North Korea, but I imagine that the age that they left would be different. So I was just curious about that. Sure, yeah. And if you download the study, we do have a participant table that will kind of break down the age there. Uh, most of them tended to be um, from, about, uh, from about 14 to 18. We did have a couple who were like 26, uh, 24. Um, generally, uh, you're, you're exactly right. There, there are a, a little bit of differences. And as I said, reasons why people go to alternative schools is sometimes if they're older than their age group, right? That they'll, they'll wanna go to an alternative school. Uh, generally, what I find uh, when, when students are older is that they tend to be more focused on realistic future plans. So realistically, what their future job's going to be, whereas someone who's younger may just be more, uh, may just be more interested in uh, kind of more of a general interest in what they want to do. Um, so it kind of, there is a little bit of a difference, but there are, there are actually a lot more similarities and their approach, because in North Korea, especially with this Jangmadang gen generation, uh, with this market generation, uh, so many of our students were in the markets at a young age. And so there's, there's a commonality of experience uh, that kind of exists regardless of that age group. Um, but that you, you, you bring a good point, is that there are some differences in age, uh, but we did find a lot of similarities as well. So just before we wrap up here, I know we're out of time, but I've dragged the uh, the paper into the chat box for everyone to download so that you guys can get around all the paywall stuff. Uh, make sure that you download that um, from the chat box before you leave. Okay, thank you, Professor Jones yeah. and Dr. Whitehead. So we are almost around of the time, so I will end the session. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask your question via email or through the conference discord thank you i need to clean the room for the next session many thanks for your interesting presentation thank you everyone thank you bye <laughs>